You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, goddammit! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody, and guess what? I am back. Um, sounding a little froggy yet today, but I, I'm getting really tired of this nonsense with my voice and the weather and I, everything. In any case, hi there. Do I sound sexier this way? <laughs> Good God, Gertie. I sound, I, in my headphones, I sound very husky. So, in any case, this is Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 10. Also on the RLM Speaker Channel, the RLM U, um, in, <laughs> Tune In Radio Station, RLM uh, Radio.xyz, all kinds of RLM and num and num places. Wow. I'm brain fog, and it just hit, you know? Oh, well. In any case, it is a Freaker Friday, and so, yeah, going to have, Vinny was on earlier today, and um, let's see, uh, Grim and Moose Girl are going to be on later on, and then tomorrow is going to be Flash with the Dork Table, and then Hal on Sunday, and man, and you know what, the new Lunar, or New Lunar New Year. I should so just should just say the Lunar New Year is next week Tuesday. So yeah, all kind of stuff coming up. So um, where's my front, Vinny? It's facing you. <laughs> it's like if someone's talking about you behind your back, aren't they talking to your front? Oh well. In any case, um, uh, let's see. Let's say hey to everybody, shall we? Over here on Twitter, I absolutely love this one. Breaking news. Canada announces that their wall is done. That's just too funny. Um, what am I, what? What am I wearing? Um, actually, I've got a fairy shirt on, and then I have a really oh-so-soft <laughs> blankie on my lap. Other than that, I'm not telling. <laughs> I'll just leave that because you guys got imaginations anyway, so there you go. Um, back to saying, hey, over here on Twitter, thank you, Barman, for letting everybody know that I am live and in poison. And hopefully I won't have a coughing fit because those have come back as well. God, dandruff, some of it itches. Oh, yeah, Monday I had a sneezing fit, damn near sneezed my head off, and Tuesday at the sinus. And man, you know, I'm just falling apart. It would help if they would quit with the damn tic-tac-toe in the sky. Oh, well. I'm still here. I'm still kicking. I'm still being obnoxious as hell. So, there you go. Uh, moving along. Over here on realliberty.org. Thank you, Grim, for letting everybody over here know that I am live right now. And, uh, yay. I also see Bobby Bain is over here as well as Vinny and Rob Works and Java, 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 Java Doctor. And Flash was here about eight minutes ago. And Gary L's been over here posting some wonderful stuff as well. So, um, yay, Gary L. Uh, the lovely Mary B was also here for a little while. Um, let's see, who's over here on this Freedoms Network, that effing site that we all know and love? And if you don't know and love it, you need to come on over to freedomsnetwork.com and uh, join up and say, hey, lots of really smart people over here. Um, hey, Estrella. I see you, sweetheart. Estrella's a posting fiend, let me tell you. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, um... Let's see, and Grimmy is here, and Cowboy Tech was here, as well as Bungle in the Jungle, and Cowboy, yeah, I already said Cowboy Tech, um, over here on Fakey Book, hey, do you know what, Ayn Rand wrote this about 60 years ago, and it's frightening how accurate it is today. When you see that trading is done, not by consent, but by compulsion, 
when you see that in order to produce you need to obtain permission from men who produce nothing when you see that money is flowing to those who deal not in goods but in favors when you see that men get richer by graft and by pull than by work and your laws don't protect you against them but protect them against you when you see corruption being rewarded and honesty becoming a self-sacrifice you may know that your society is doomed Ayn Rand was a sharp lady let me tell you and one more thing that's over here um, real quick before I get over to the RLM chat and say hey over there um, this is the theory of intelligence hi cowboy tech um, so the theory of intelligence according to um, let's see got dandruff now I can't think of his name oh well it's from cheers so <coughs> excuse me well you see Norm it's like this a herd of buffalo can only move as fast as the slowest buffalo and when the herd is hunted it's the slowest and the weakest ones at the back that are killed first this is natural selection and is good for the herd as a whole because the general speed and health of the whole group keeps improving by the regular killing of the weakest members in much the same way the human brain can only operate as fast as the slowest brain cells now as we know excessive intake of alcohol kills brain cells but naturally it attacks the slowest and the weakest brain cells first in this way regular consumption of beer eliminates the weaker brain cells making the brain a faster and more efficient machine that norm is why you always feel smarter after a couple beers and why I always am funnier and dance better and sing better <laughs> it's kind of crazy how that works isn't it thank you in any case uh, doomed doomed I tell you <coughs> excuse me <coughs> okay yeah grimmy it's gonna be a loony new year oh I think I finally got that cleared yay so over here in the RLM which is where you need to be because if you're listening on Spreaker you need to come over here to reallibertymedia.com think of a nickname join the chat give me some static I'll give it back because quite frankly <laughs> as soon as my brain kicks into gear um, I don't have that good of an internet and obviously my brain is running about the same speed as my internet right now so if you want to give me some static and you want to talk to me over on Spreaker honey I can't keep that one open as well as broadcast it just really messes with the the uh, upload and download and yeah it messes with things so come on over to Real Liberty Media and say hey to everybody and give me some crap and I'll give it right back to you because well you know if you give me too much crap then I have to have storage permits which means dealing with the EPA and I've seen all those forms and there's just no way I'm going through all that so I'm just gonna have to give it back to you just saying so over here in the RLM right up top I see barman the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world uh, bill ma beer makes you an illusionist really you know I think Benjamin Franklin said that uh, the proof that God loves us is that or something along those lines is that there is beer in heaven so or beer in heaven is proof that God loves us or something like that I don't something along those lines but you know Pastafarians and this being Friday so it's a Pastafarian holy day Pastafarians believe that heaven has beer volcanoes and wenches and strippers and stuff and Pastafarians are crazy people just gotta tell you <coughs> excuse me back to saying hey cowboy tech is here yeah hi bar man once again in case I didn't get that spit out before I went off on a squirrely tangent cowboy tech who's hearing pleasant voices although they are somewhat husky and a little on the coffee side tonight and I am drinking some coffee too I'm kinda teed out but I also see Grimner is here hey Grimmy Grimmy is the RLM God don't you know and he's closely followed by the lovely moose girl and they're gonna be on later tonight with the freakers ball so be sure to check that out the lovely Kate is also here oh looky there I see flash just 
argued in. Hi, Flasher. And looky there, DC is here, as well as Asmo, the lovely Chloe, as well as Chalcedony. <coughs> Damn it. I even have a lozenge and everything. Um, Echelon is also here. Oh, there's another Chloe, too. Flash somebody who's argon and Vinny who's agon. Ag. Ack. You're supposed to say ack, you know, and do the build a cat face. Um... Let's see, where am I at? Oh, I'm here, kind of, sort of, maybe, almost on purpose, even. I.B. Don C. is here as well as Poxified. Now, there's only one Pox. No, there's the other Poxies. We got more than one Pox in the chat box. The Lovely Rain is also here, as well as RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel. Uh, let me see. I gotta do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Rob Works, who fired up the bubbler. Sorry, hun, just can't partake, because I'm having enough trouble just talking and breathing, apparently, today. <coughs> <coughs> Damn it. Circles, I wish I had your mojo, hun. I don't wish my chemtrails on you, because, damn, they've been playing tic-tac-toe out here a lot lately. Uh, moving along. The lovely Romes is here. Yes, Romes, I know you're lovely. I just know you... I, I can see it in my mind's eye. Rome's is lovely, at least this time of year. Vinny is also here, as well as Phantom, the wonderful young man that did my intro for me. Beetle! Hey, Beetle, how you doing? I also see Cyborg Noodle may be touched by a Cyborgian noodliness. Dakota is also here, where it's... Oh, that's a double... Okay, Vinny. Wow. Ack. Uh, Frumpy is also here. D Dakota and Frumpy are in the Great White Nort, where they already built their wall. <laughs> Out of snow. It'll melt, don't you know. I also see Gromit is here, as well as a double dose of Java, 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 Java Doctor. And looky there, JJ's, no, 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 JJ's is here. Hey, you Scottish feller. And Kozu is also in the house, as well as Nensan Dubois. I feel so continental when I say that. I have no idea why, but I do. Perfect Ion. How cool is that? We got a perfect Ion in the chat. I've never seen a perfect Ion. How sweet. It's a first for everyone. Well, okay, for me. Poxiphone and Poxihome is also here. Um, if Fluke is Vanna White, who is Pat Sajak? Oh, Lord. Pat Sajak is actually quite witty, so I will have to ponder that one just a little bit <coughs> <coughs> excuse me wow okay pat sajak hmm oh barman is pat well is par is barman as witty as uh pat J sajak because i follow him on twitter and he really is pretty witty he doesn't post a whole hell of a lot but when he does it's a good zinger him and chuck woolery i like both of them in any case, moving back to saying, hey, where was I at? Oh, yeah, Papa Papa Pond Sauce is also here, as well as Sock Puppet. Hi, Sock. How you doing? I also see Skittle. Taste the rainbow. Check your front hole at the door. Oh, Vinny, hun. I can't do that. It's attached. I also see Uno is here, as well as Yahweh. Or Yewa. 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 Hello, Yewa. Yewa. I'm sure I'm not saying that right, but that's okay. <coughs> okay. Now, seeing as how I'm still kind of croupy, coffee, hacky, wheezy, icky. I mean, I'm here, but yeah. Mm. I'm going to do some healthy stuff tonight because I really need to. And I think I'm, that was, I was going to go into town today, and then I said no because I. I got carried away tending to things inside the house, you know, trying to de-dust and all of that fun stuff because you, excuse me, eliminate the dust and all that other fun stuff. It's less things to, there you go, whatever. And since I have Milo everywhere, y'all know what Milo is. It's also called sorghum, but it's spelled, it's easier to spell when you call it Milo. <laughs> it has lots of dust to it. And I have a grain elevator not too far from where I live. And they got several piles of Milo on the ground. 
because they don't have anywhere to go with it because the elevators are full because don't ever let them tell you there's a grain shortage of any kind in this country because I can tell you out in grain country they have it on the ground they've got so damn much they don't know where to go with it and I think a lot of that is because they're trying to manufacture some kind of nonsense but in any case when the wind comes up and blows yeah the dust goes everywhere and it gets yeah <clears throat> and milo dust is particularly nasty cuz it's very itchy very ugh it's it's just nasty stuff and i'll be mowing that crap up for months but in any case you know so i'm thinking i need to do me some some healthy stuff tonight you know to kind of get my because I'm already doing all of my oils and my colloidal silver and my vitamin C and my eucalyptus and my green teas and all that other fun stuff and yeah mother nature is telling me guess what I'm still gonna mess with you so do I sound whiny <laughs> I feel like a whiny in any case Let's see, where do I want to go that, um, do I want to go with this one? Or do I want to, actually, what I think I will go with, I have, I have umpteen gazillion tabs open, and most of them are knitting patterns. Because <laughs> I've been making things. Okay, because I don't want to quit whining, grams. Okay, so here we go. Let's go with this one. This is from healingthebody.ca. And yes, we all know that we need to heal our bodies because it, we are being inundated daily with nastiness. And maybe that's what's going on. Maybe I've been inundated so damn much and it all just kind of came and I'm finally getting all of the evil spirits out of the building at once. You'd think I could pace myself you'd think. Oh well. This is five foods that capture 90% of the mercury in your seafood and can save you from serious autoimmune disease. And some of these foods are actually quite yummy. Some of them I actually even remember. Grammy, I have some echinacea tea and I have been doing I I have been doing ginger and turmeric tea I've been doing lemon tea I've been doing green tea I've been doing a, a throat soother tea that's got licorice root in it and all kinds of it's really yummy it's really good tea I, I mean I've I've got like five or six different kinds of teas that I've been doing and, and one of them is an immune booster that's got echinacea in it and and although they have helped because I can talk now this you know this may be sound really bad to you guys but oh my god this is such an improvement from Monday and Tuesday <laughs> it really is a drastic improvement and Wednesday was just one of those where you know when you're away from your your normal things that oh I need to take this be, to head this off at the pass because I was away from home and so you know, it starts building all day long, and then by Wednesday evening, the sinuses were just, uh, so, yeah. So I have been inundating myself with healthy stuff, and I really am vastly improved from the beginning of the week. Trust me. I really am. In any case, um, getting back to this article, because it's very, I think it's very important to know this. Um... And yes, I also have um, echinacea capsules as well. But yeah, I've been doing the echinacea tea and the vitamin C and and yeah, I've been doing it all. <laughs> You'd think I would be just healthy. As, why do they mean by healthy as a horse? I always wondered where that saying came from. In any case, back to this article. In today's toxic world, uh-huh. It's good to know some easy tricks to keep your health from going off the rails. <laughs> okay, moving along. Even though there are obscene amounts of poisons that we need to deal with on a daily basis, most of them will be introduced through our food. 
Choosing organic is a step in the preferred direction and certainly a vast improvement on eating most conventional foods. But there are still other threats where we cannot control the medium in which they are grown. One such environment is our mercury polluted waters, which dangerously contaminate many popular seafood choices. And you know, out here in the middle of the boonies, um, we really need um, a lot of iodine because we don't we don't get nearly and most of the foods that can are high in iodine are on coastal areas you know seafoods and so people here in middle America and I'm not talking mid America as in freaking Chicago I'm talking about flyover country that they forget about you know if Chicago is middle America then most definitely anything between the Mississippi and the Rockies is flyover country and as far as everybody else is concerned in the big ass cities we don't exist you know they get their food from us but we don't exist that's that's not Midlands that's not the middle of America that's just a big blank area yeah I live out in this big blank area and you can just keep on moving as far as I'm concerned but yes seafood is very good for your diet even if it's just um, kelp which is very high in iodine and you need that iodine for your thyroid to work properly which helps your liver work properly which helps all you know it's all connected in any case back to this article <coughs> excuse me so what is a seafood lover to do farmed fish is arguably worse than wild caught very true and the number of relatively uncontaminated water sources is growing thinner by the day cutting back on consumption may be a wise idea but there is no really no safe level of mercury in the body so each time you dine on your favorite seafood you're likely accumulating what is possibly the most toxic element to be introduced into your body now fortunately there is a way to help capture mercury in seafood through your diet and it's by simply pairing foods with your seafood that stick to this noxious chemical and this can save you from many debilitating diseases like autoimmune or from simply making them much worse now the best foods to capture the dietary mercury are it turns out that there are a number of them that can capture it but knowing the best sources that can decrease absorption rates by over 90 percent is a great way to address the concern this way you can eat them before during and after a potentially mercury tainted meal in other words every meal anymore <coughs> excuse me I wonder if it also sticks to like aluminum because aluminum seems to be in a lot of stuff anymore too step away from the aluminum cans <coughs> excuse me damn it uh, the aluminum cans the aluminum cooking utensils step away from all of that shit it's because it it'll leach into your food I don't have any proven or any documentation right in front of me but it just makes sense to me that that crap will leach into your food I mean it makes sense people like do an awful lot of cooking with cast iron have higher iron levels in their blood so I would think that aluminum would leach into your food as well so back to this um, and also you know the best sources of foods are organic but how do you know that that organic food is really organic because if someone around them is spraying with pesticides or something the drift can get on that organic stuff so it's sometimes organic ain't worth the money they charge you in any case back to this article so chlorella is rated the highest of mercury capturing ability coming in at 99 percent now many chlorella products are tainted with heavy metals due to exposure to pollution so are not necessarily recommended for obvious reasons however there is a lab experiment that the health rangers uh, clean chlorella was used to clearly demonstrate its ability to bind to mercury 
Now for the most effective way to capture mercury, they have a little link here for you to get that. Coming in second was hemp protein, which I am really tickled to find out that it's at least in the legislative process. Um, but if not, I will just go ahead and purchase my hemp online. Um, but uh, hemp protein captures 98% of mercury that it encounters. Now, hemp also cleans up the soil. So that's another good reason to be growing it. And this could be um, achieved through the hemp protein powders or by using hemp hearts in your seafood meals. So try making a hemp-based crust or simply sprinkle it on top and rest assured it will largely prevent mercury absorption. And even better, have a green smoothie with a hemp, and see they got a link for the Health Rangers Hemp Juvenate. So, and it contains chlorella and hemp. Um, in third place is peanut butter. Holy mackinoli. Now, I love peanut butter, and I do an awful lot with peanut butter. So, yeah, peanut butter. And if you look it up, peanut butter was originally by prescription only. It was a stomach um, treatment for people that had stomach issues. It weighs in at 95% absorption. And perhaps the least practical side to seafood, it can also exacerbate autoimmune issues, which yes, it can, but I think some of that actually needs to fall back on the vaccines with all of the nasties that are in those vaccines, all the adjuvants and the, the things that are supposed to increase the shelf life. Um, they mess with your immune system so that you can't deal with the peanut butter itself so I personally love my peanut butter but I know some people that are so allergic to it that they can't even be in a restaurant that serves peanuts so it sucks for them um, it does go on to say that it is good for you having a tablespoon before chowing down that will help by blocking the mercury from being absorbed into your body now in fourth place was strawberries at a 95% absorption rate and this special plant fibers um, inside the strawberries are amazing at mopping up mercury before it gets absorbed by the digestive system. So you know you make yourself a salad with strawberries um, along with your seafood or you can make yourself a strawberry smoothie to drink along with your seafood. I don't go out to eat that often, so, you know, this is kind of, I would do this at home kind of stuff, um, but just as you know, strawberries are way up there, and also frozen strawberries will work as well, so, now coming in fifth is cilantro leaf, it's also at a 95% absorption rate, and it's been known for its assistance in helping remove mercury, mercury from the body for quite some time. And it's easy to add it to a seafood meal. Or you, or you could work it in just to help prevent toxic mercury absorption. Now there's also several other foods that have been tested to capture dietary mercury with an over 90% efficiency. Including raspberries, cacao powder, and wheat grass. And since heavy metal exposure like mercury has been implicated in many serious diseases like autoimmune, it becomes increasingly important to avoid or avoid any source of mercury, dietary or otherwise. And a study in Egypt found links between mercury intoxication and rheumatoid arthritis and showed that RA sufferers had increased levels of mercury in their blood. It should also be noted that mercury is uh, uh, lipophilic, meaning it concentrates in fatty tissues like the brain and the joints. So it also deals with autoimmune, that affects your autoimmune, and it also deals with and uh, adversely affects your memory. Um, so hopefully some of this information will help you to, at least while you're eating the seafood that you love, use some of these other foods along with it to help so that you can get the benefits of the seafood without the bad juju. 
be good for you. So, okay. Now, and then there's another one I want to get to that, um, coconut milk, which, um, <laughs> glue factory. Oh, yeah, Rob works. It is called silverware for a reason. And yes, um, dun dun dun. Maybe it's still in my pocket. Because I do have, there it is. And the reason I looked up coconut milk, or, okay, the reason I looked up coconut milk initially was because I was looking up um, a recipe to make shampoo. And all of the recipes that I was coming up with um, had coconut milk in them, along with your essential oils. And I thought, why do you put coconut milk in your shampoo? So then I just typed in my little search thing, why is coconut in shampoo or coconut milk in shampoo? And I found this wonderful article from food.ndtv.com. It's 10 amazing coconut milk benefits for hair, face, and skin. Now, with its creamy texture and natural sweetness, coconut milk tastes like it should be bad for you. And yet, it's anything but that. Coconut milk, also known as Narial Kadud in Hindi, is often considered a miracle liquid, as it may help protect the body from infections. That's according to Dr. Rahul Nagar, who is a dermatologist at Max Hospitals. And did you know that coconut milk isn't actually milk at all? It's the liquid that is naturally found inside mature coconuts, and it's stored within the coconut meat. So when you crack open a fresh coconut, the liquid that leaks out is coconut water. But when you blend the coconut meat and strain it, the result is a thicker coconut milk. So what's the difference? Well, as coconut matures, more of the water inside is replaced with coconut meat. So mature coconuts tend to be better producers of coconut milk, while the younger coconuts are the best producers of coconut water. And coconut water is higher in sugar and certain electrolytes, while coconut milk is higher in healthy saturated fats. And uh, it can be consumed as is or as a substitute for milk. And Dr. Murkta, who is a nutrition and dietetics at Sri Ganga Ram Hospital, says that coconut milk is highly recommended for patients who are lactose intolerant. And contrary to popular belief, coconut milk helps increase HDL levels, which is your happy cholesterol, and decrease LDL levels, which is the bad cholesterol. And it also improves blood pressure and helps prevent cardiac arrhythmia due to its potassium content. Now, coconut milk is packed with vitamin C, E, B1, B3, B5, and B6, as well as iron, selenium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, and phosphorus. Phosphorus. And Dr. Nagar also says that coconut milk contains a good concentration of lauric acid, which is a medium-chain fatty acid, which gets converted to monolaurin in the body and is comparable to the antiviral and antibacterial properties. Lauric acid is also found in mother's milk and is known to promote brain development, bone health, and immunity. So just like Dick Gregory rightly put it, coconut milk is the only thing on this planet that comes identically to mother's milk. And the way you make coconut milk is if you have unsweetened shredded coconut and you take it and you put it in your blender and then you put four cups of um, boiling water on that and you let it steep for 10 minutes and then you run the blender on puree for three to five minutes and uh, let it kind of set for a little bit 
and then you drape like a cheesecloth or a milk cloth over a bowl and you pour that over that cheese cheesecloth or milk cloth and you squeeze as much liquid out as you possibly can then what is in the bowl is your coconut milk and then what is left you can either compost or you can put it in your dehydrator and then grind it up even finer and make coconut fun then it's coconut flour so kind of cool no waste that way <coughs> excuse me and the coconut milk <coughs> excuse me will keep in your fridge for at least three weeks so although if i'm going to be making shampoo or some other stuff like that with it which i'm thinking i'm going to make some shampoo and some um lotion and some other stuff when i make me a batch of coconut milk but this i found that very fascinating very cool now the 10 things that are that a coconut milk is beneficial for is number one it restores dry or damaged hair um, because of its excellent moisturizing properties and a gentle massage for five minutes with the homemade coconut milk followed by a hot towel can have a good nourishing effect and is particularly beneficial for restoring dry damaged or brittle hair as well as split ends <coughs> excuse me number two for those of you with thinning hair coconut milk contains the essential nutrients required for healthy hair and boosting your hair follicles and promoting hair, hair growth so applying coconut milk on your hair and massage for three to five minutes and then shampoo as usual after 20 minutes so you let it sit, massage it for three to five minutes which basically is opening up the pores of your scalp and then wait 20 minutes and then shampoo it out and if you use a homemade shampoo then you're getting more coconut milk in your hair so it's way cool win-win um, number three it conditions your hair you can either wash your hair with equal equal amounts of coconut milk and shampoo or use coconut milk as a leave-in conditioner it adds volume to, to your hair and it makes it less greasy and promotes longer thicker hair with that shine that you've always wanted so no more of those excuse me chemical laden things that are ever so expensive at the grocery store too although coconut out in these parts is not exactly cheap but yeah have you ever bought some of that fancy schmancy salon stuff that stuff ain't cheap either now coconut milk for the face as a makeup remover for those of you that wear makeup i do not um, I figure if I'm going to put on, why do, you know, people put on war paint for going to weddings and for funerals. And I figure, why do that? I'll look like a freaking raccoon anyway by the end of the service. And then everybody will look at me like, oh God. So, you know, I, I just don't do it. I just don't wear makeup. It's just not worth the hassle. If you can't stand looking at me the way I am, then that's why the good Lord made your eyelids close and made your head pivot. So you can turn and look the other way. That's what I always say. So as but as a makeup remover, add two parts of olive oil to your one part coconut milk on a cotton pad, and it not only cleanses your face, but it nourishes your skin at the same time. But you need to rub gently while you're doing this. Number five, it prevents acne. Dr. Nagar says that for people with oily and acne prone skin, coconut milk can be used as a cleanser due to its antibacterial properties. And the fats in coconut milk do not clog pores, thereby preventing acne. Number six, as a facial scrub, you can use coconut milk. Um, as a face scrub for a gentle exfoliate all you need to do is soak some oats in coconut milk for 10 minutes and if you can get some stone ground oats or something because they're a little bit smaller it would work a little bit mm, and your skin would feel so soft and smooth number seven prevents premature aging yeehaw Coconut milk has high levels of vitamin C, 
which helps maintain elasticity and flexi flexibility of the skin. And it's also rich in copper and prevents wrinkles, sagging skin, and age spots. So you can soak six to eight almond or six to seven almonds overnight, peel their skins off in the morning, and grind it into a smooth paste, and then add five to six drops of coconut milk, mix it well, and then apply this paste on your face for 15 minutes, and then wash it off with cold water. Wow. Or you could just, I'd say you could eat it, but I'm thinking all of the stuff that it pulls out, you may not want to eat it. But hey, it sounds, sounds like something you could eat too. <coughs> And I wonder, with it being rich in copper, because copper actually helps um, keeping your natural hair color as well, if you get enough copper in your diet. Um, number eight, it treats sunburns. According to Dr. Rahul, application of coconut milk over sunburnt skin aids in rapid healing because of its anti-inflammatory properties. And it helps by cooling the skin and reducing pain, swelling, and redness. Number nine, it moisturizes the skin. So, you know, we've all heard of taking a milk bath, or I have at least. Well, it's time to use coconut milk instead. It's a great moisturizer due to its soothing properties, and you can rub coconut milk on your skin directly for 20 to 30 minutes to combat dryness and promote healthy glowing skin. You can even add a cup of rose petals or half a cup of rose water to a cup of coconut milk to your lukewarm water in a tub. And soaking in that bath for about 15 minutes will help restore moisture to your dry skin. Also, you can grind a half cup of old-fashioned oatmeal and mix it with your one to two cups of coconut milk and one tablespoon of honey and put that in your bath, which it's like doing an Aveeno bath. If any of you have heard of the Aveeno for, you know, people with uh, hives or anything like that, Aveeno does do wonderful for hives or, or poison ivy. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me, excuse me. And finally, number 10, it does treat skin ailments. A gentle application of coconut milk provides an excellent moisturizing effect to dry skin conditions like eczema, dermatitis, and psoriasis, according to Dr. Rahul. And the natural fatty acids in coconut milk help treat dry and irritated skin and remove the harmful bacteria. So, not only is coconut oil beneficial, but so is the milk. And, you know, I can't remember what it was that they used the husks for, but there's something that the husks get. get uh, ground, and I'm, I'm wondering if it was for roads or something. You know, it gets ground up, and they uh, mix, make kind of a, a road covering, kind of like asphalt, but not. But I don't know. I, I could, that just could be coming into my head from God knows where, but I know I remember reading something about grinding up the, the coconut itself, the actual hard husk, and uh, using it for things as well. <coughs> so, another one of those wonderful healthful hints and handy tips. This is not Eloise, but... We all died and went to hell. Mm. You know, um, we can either have heaven on earth or we can have hell on earth. It depends on our own behavior and what we allow to continue. That's what I really think. And yeah, that Virginia governor, freaking diabolical. I need to remember... To say, bless his heart, bless his heart, because he's a broken individual, and whatever I put out into the universe is going to come back at me. So I need to keep remembering, bless your heart, bless your heart, oh my Lord, somebody please fix this broken individual. Because man, oh man, oh man, broken people break things. Um, oh, cowboy doesn't wear makeup either. Good for you, cowboy. Go all natural. That's what I say. <laughs> 
Okay, let's see. Um, now that I've done your healthy stuff, I think it's time for me to go and check out the pig real quick. And then I think I'm going to get out of here so I can rest my voice. I really need to get over this crud. It would help if Mother Nature would stop. Maybe I need to just visual visualize. I was doing good. <laughs> I was. Okay, word of the day, gibberish. I'm very good at that word. I can jibber-jabber with the best of them. But according to the pig, it's what you get from a Hollywood lib when a screen or a script writer isn't putting words in their mouth. That makes sense. In the quotable quote section, the one permanent emotion of the inferior man is fear. Fear of the unknown, of the complex, the inexplicable. What he wants above everything else is safety. And you know, I have seen the safety measures that our government does for us. And you know, I'm thinking, with friends like that, who needs enemas? In other words, what do we need? You know, they're supposed to be here for our safety, for our protection, and yet, and yet, do we really need that kind of protection? I don't think so. Um, scrolling along, they got all kind of fun stuff in here. Um... Let's see. No, that's that's from last week. Oh yeah, today is the first day of February. Yay, it's a whole new month. According to the Gregorian calendar, which the more I learn about that, the more I realize that's a bunch of hooey. In any case, according to the Gregorian calendar, this day in history, the 1st of February, 1978, Tinseltown pedophile director Roman Polanski skips bail and fled to France after pleading guilty to charges of engaging in sex with a 13-year-old girl. And how many of those crackpots, bless their hearts, in Hollywood stepped out and said, You're being so mean to him. She wanted it. Really, sweetheart? I don't think you would be quite so understanding if you were on the receiving end under the same circumstances. You know, it's kind of like all these people that say that we must be able to abort that child even up to the point of the child coming out the birth canal. Really? And where would you be if your mother felt that way? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm thinking you wouldn't be here and I wouldn't have to put up with your nonsense. Man, time machine. Holy moly, that's one reason for a time machine. Moving along. This date in history, the 1st of February, 1979. 7th century zealot and relentlessly fun guy, Ayatollah Rahula Khomeini, ends his exile, begins to erase 1,300 years of human history in Iran. Hmm. This date in history, the 1st of February... 1994, Union of Concerned Scientists issues a report pinning the blame on green, greenhouse gases when a large meteorite splashes down near um, Kusai in the Pacific Ocean. Really? Greenhouse gases did? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, moving along. This date in history, the 1st of February, 2003. The relentless quest for new knowledge claims the seven crew, um, seven crew members aboard the space shuttle Columbia when it disintegrates during re-entry over Texas. That's the story that we were told. I'm not so sure I believe that story anymore. Just putting that out there. Of course, there's an awful lot that I've been told that I no longer be live. So, there you go. And lastly, this date in history, the 1st of February, 2004, beating the prior record, 119 in 1998, at least 250 Muslim pilgrims crushed to death during the annual stoning of Satan ritual at the 
Mina uh, Valley, Saudi Arabia. Wow. Wow. People, people, people. Wow. I have... Mm, I only have a little bit of time left, but I got to put this out there. Any time, any time a belief system gets you into such a religious fervor that people start dying, I start questioning that belief system. Whether it be government or religion or scientism or the belief that our history is real or not, any time a belief system becomes so, so engrossing, so, you know, I don't know, I don't know the word for it, but anytime you get so wrapped up in a belief system that participating in something with that belief system causes the death of others, man, you got to back off. Something is, something is really wrong there. Something is really wrong there. And, uh, wow, wow, crushed to death. You know, it's even like, uh, music concerts. What was that one? Oh, I don't remember which concert it was now where people got crushed to death in the rush to the stage. Really? Or the running of the bulls. How many people get killed in that? Whether it's cultural or whatever, man, oh man, people stop and think. If you what you're participating in is causing the death of people, is it really worth it? Oh, but we've gotta because we're such and such. No, you don't gotta. You don't gotta. Oh, that's where we need to step up as humans, I think. I really think we need to step up and and stop. Stop with the herd mentality, you know, because that herd mentality just takes you right off a cliff. Cliff Clavin, that's his name, finally popped into my head. <laughs> Cliff and the buffalo. Woo, yeah, oh well. Huh. Y'all been listening to the Rocket Chair here on a Freaker Friday, and I've been kind of sort of off and on. Wow, going on squirrely tangents. Thank you for listening, and be sure to stick around because Grimner and Moose Girl will be on later on with the Freaker's Ball. Also, tomorrow, let me pull this up so I get it right. Tomorrow at noon Eastern Time is a dork table with Flash a Rooney Dork. And uh, guess what? The Ocelli effect is also on all week. Actually, it looks like he only takes Sunday off. Dang. Props to you, dude. He's on 8 p.m. Um, Eastern Time, Monday through Saturday, it looks like. Well, no. Yep. Yeah. Wow, dude. Seriously. Props to you. Um, okay, back to saying, uh, da, 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 Sunday at noon Eastern Time, Grimmy's coming on with the blues and a rousing game of trivia going on in the chit chat, and I may actually get to participate in that this weekend. As far as I know, I don't have any plans for Sunday, as far as I know, but plans are always subject to, <coughs> excuse me, to change. Also Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, Hal Anthony is going to open up a can of whoop-ass on yo ass behind the woodshed. Be sure to check that out because Hal's always got infinite loads of brain food. You may not understand it the first time listening to it, but yeah, listen again. You know, it's like a lot of things. I listen to them two or three times and I get a little more out of it every time I listen. Now, next week, Monday, Grimner, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, his leftovers. Grimmy's always serving up leftovers, and they're always freaking awesome. I love leftovers. Flavors get to mingle, and brain food leftovers are the best ever. Then, Tuesday at 1 p.m. Um, Eastern Time is In a Perfect World, contrasting the occupation with Flash-a-Rooney. Um, next week, Wednesday... 
if my voice holds out. Guess what? Next week, Tuesday, is also, quick reminder, Lunar New Year. Next week, Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, yours truly will be back with the rocket chair. Hopefully, my voice will be better. <coughs> and not as much hacky, wheezy, coffee, coffee sneezy crap. Because you know what? As soon as I get done here, I am going to have a soak with some Epsom salt and eucalyptus, I think. Yeah. Open up the breathing passages. Hmm. Let's see. Next week, Thursday. Thursday at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Flash Rooney is going to be on with 20% off. And then next week, Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Vinny with the Ponder Gander over there on the RLM radio. So, all kinds of things going on. And you know what? If you got an idea or you got something you want to talk about, talk to Grim. I'll bet you he can find a spot to fit you in. There's room. Trust me. And y'all have a voice. But until then, y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your evening, a wonderful weekend, and I will catch up with you on the flip side. Please remember, I truly do love you all. And I wish you all enough. Good night. <laughs>